This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It certainly is. I'm excited about being together today. And as Dwight mentioned, we are really focusing on God getting all the glory, not just during this month, but throughout our entire lives, individually and collectively as a church. Last week, we talked about giving God glory through the public reading of Scripture, and we did that. We acknowledged how great God is and how amazing He is, His awesome wonders and miracles, the way He is in our lives every day. We focused on that last week. We're using a verse from Ephesians chapter 3 where Paul says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. If there's anything that should be our foundation, individuals and as a church collectively that should motivate us inspire us encourage us to be different ma difference makers in this world is giving god the glory we should be all about good deeds but not for it to be seen of us but for us to be able to show god what he can it's exciting to be gathered today to talk about yet just the way that dwight has already mentioned that we're going to be giving glory to god it has been Music is a universal human joy. After more than four centuries of slavery, the nation of Israel has just escaped from the mighty army of the country of Egypt. And there's only one barrier that stands between them and the And as you recall, it is a significant barrier. It is the Red Sea. And on their heels is coming the Egyptian army. And before them lies what would appear to be a barrier that would be impossible to get through. We are God parted that sea. Children of Israel army them. And in Exodus chapter 14, verse 31, this is what is said. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the people feared their Lord and put their trust in him. What's interesting is what ensued. In chapter 15, after this has been recorded, them, given them everything that they had dreamed about and talked about and hoped for for literally for centuries, you wonder if maybe they would offer a sacrifice, maybe they would build an altar, maybe burn some incense, maybe it would be appropriate. Great. What, what would they do to really express to God just how grateful they are? And of course, you know what they did in Exodus chapter 15, they sang. They sang a song. It is the first recorded song in the Bible. And you know, this is such an amazing song that when you go to Revelation chapter 15, it's repeated. The song of Moses is mentioned again. God was so overcome by these words that people had come up with. Come with that, that he would want it repeated over Revelation 15. If we for a moment underestimate the power of singing, then we're not spending enough time in God's word and understanding exactly how meaningful singing is to God and how meaningful it should be for so if you like the statistics, there are at least 185 songs recorded in the Bible. 150 of those are in the Psalms alone. The word sing, the thing that I really like about knowing, it appears, does it say sing with perfect pitch? Because I say sing perfectly never does it say you better sing alto soprano bass or tenor because i like to sing flat and i like to sing sharp but i'm so grateful that god never gives parameters for what singing is he just it just sing sometimes that verb appears just sing this morning i would say that God is inviting all of us to sing. So why sing? Just a couple of quick thoughts, and then we're going to kind of get into us being able to sing. 
this kind of adds just these thoughts that underscore how important sin is to God. The message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach. Because the best songs we sing together serve as a three-minute, easily memorizable, deeply biblical summary of important truths from Scripture. And now true, some of the songs that we'll be singing this morning, and, and you will recall they are coming directly from Scripture, sometimes even verbatim. Because again, we're allowing God's Word to dwell in. So think about how, how many things you've learned. You know, I, I mean, I don't know the tune very well, but... I know that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was the way that I learned the 27 books. You probably did that as well. Other songs like that that we have sung that we sing to one another. I know we're always talking about how our collective assembly this morning is something that where we are participating. This isn't a spectator event where we're asking you to raise a card, give some a five, a seven, or a ten based on their performance up here. But I also know that right now, through preaching, honestly, you're participating, but I'm really the only one talking. So it's not quite as participatory. I know we're sitting and we're participating, offering petitions to God, but it's really not like we're all saying the prayer at the same time. And that could also be said about the public reading of Scripture, but that cannot be said about singing. If there's anything in which we should be participating collectively, it is singing. Tell you that now and then when I'm looking across the auditorium and I see people aren't singing, if I were to tell you that that doesn't disturb me, I would be lying because it does. Because even if you don't have a good voice and I'm at the top of that list, no, no reason or excuse good enough to say that I do not want to participate in letting the Word of Christ dwell in me richly, that I have the opportunity to encourage others. You don't have to be the loudest person on your pew. You don't have to have the most perfect pitch. But God says, would you just sing? Because let me give you some other... ...are teaching one another. When we talk about praise Him, praise Him. Teaching each other about who God is and what He means to us. We want the world to know about him as well. It's also a response to a grateful heart. Paul said here, sing with gratitude from your hearts. If anybody should be showing gratitude from their hearts, it would be us. And God says one of the most natural ways to do that is through singing. In James chapter 5, verse 13, James says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. I wonder sometimes if we're not singing enough because we're not reflecting often enough on God's amazing blessings which should create within us a happy heart. Now, my wife is really into singing as much as I'm not, to be quite honest. But I will tell you, I can't tell you how often she'll make a remark, and I don't even notice it, but she'll say, well, you must be feeling better today because you're singing or you're humming or whatever that might be. Because it is an outward expression of a grateful heart, of a happy heart. And I'm not talking about this smug look on our faces where we pretend that everything's always good and we're just 
going to just pretend that everything is always right. We're just going to have this goofy, happy look on our faces. I'm I'm talking about that joy and happiness that we have within us because we know that God is in control. God's promises are true. And God wants us to reflect him in every way. You know, I will tell you that when I think about the church in Lisbon, I have to tell you one of my fondest memories of being a part of that church in Lisbon. The, the church building, the place where we met, really was more kind of like a, well, it wasn't a church building, it was just a space on a fairly major street, had a lot of windows out front, a lot of people walking back and forth. And I want to show you that, that, you know, as much as I love seeing with the church in Lisbon, we were not like, you know, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. We weren't like, you know, up there like with perfect pitch and perfect voices and all that kind of stuff. Uh, probably didn't sing as well as you all do out here. But one thing I always remember is that on any given Sunday, people would be walking up and down the street, but the only time was had the door open was when we were I never see, I never saw as preaching. I never saw him stop when we were passing the contribution tray. But when that church was singing and they sang with all their heart. People stopped outside and looked and listened because it spoke to them. In Psalm 96, we conclude with these thoughts, and then we're going to sing. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of his wonderful act. When we sing, God is glorified. He loves to hear our voices. When we sing, he loves for us to share that wonderful story. So, when we sing this morning, and uh, two of you, Kyle and Ted, both can be leading. You know, I, I would encourage you to do a couple of things. Gonna make you feel a little uncomfortable, but maybe look around at one another. It's okay. Don't let it ruin your thought process. Just keep on singing. I will tell you that when I first started going to a church service, not as a believer at all, but just because I was curious about things and because my girlfriend invited me, I can tell you that the singing was always amazing to me because I would look around and see people singing, and I realized that they were engaged in worship as well. It wasn't just about who was talking or preaching or praying or reading scripture. As taught in the Bible, singing is more than a warm-up. Let's fill our space in a worship service to get us to the end of the hour. This morning, our focus is on to God be the glory of the song. Let's join together united in singing as we glorify him as we build each other up and reflect to him our gratitude and joy for his blessings. There are some songs that you're going to like more than others, but he doesn't ask us to decide which ones we should or should sing. Let's all sing everyone together with gratitude in our hearts, with a desire to encourage one another, with a desire to share his wondrous acts, with a desire to be able to reflect our gratitude and our happiness and our desire to build each other up. 33. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. How can I keep 